Hey guys, we're back. This time we're going to be taking a look at Ruby Combat Ready again, but not the actual base game because we already did that. We're going to be looking at the uh, expansion packs, which I'm not sure if the retail ones are going to come like this or it was just a Kickstarter, but these were really cheaply packaged, but you're going to rip these open, you're going to take the stuff out, you're going to put it in the big box anyway, and um, I'm going to go over all of them in one video because they are just small packs rather than break it up. I think it would just be too much uh, of nothing if I split it into different videos. So we're going to get right in and look. We have the Emerald and Mercury expansion pack, which is available for purchase. We have the um, unnamed character, which is now named. It's the Little Miss uh, sub-boss pack. And then there is the expansion pack, uh, was the Kickstarter pack, which came with all of the upgrade cards for the three villains in the base set, as well as the five heroes in the base set, as well as Neo. I believe you can get that upgrade pack and Neo as separate purchases now, but they are all still available. So we'll get right in and take a look at each of these. The first thing I want to look at is the Kickstarter exclusives. And these are the only three things that were a Kickstarter exclusive. So if you didn't get in on the Kickstarter, Everything else is available to pick up, so don't think you're missing out. You're missing three scenarios here. We have the uh, White Bang Revolution, and they all have the Kickstarter logo on them too, which makes it easy to identify. We have White Bang Revolution, which is a uh, hard one where um, the White Bang minions are uh, joining in. And uh, additional ones show up if uh, you bash the villain. So then we have Silent Rain, which is a Neo one. And this one's pretty much identical to her normal one, except it's a uh, hard. has this extra line here at the bottom that every time the villain hits, she heals equal to the uh, amount that was dealt. And every time Neo hits, you heal the villain equal to the amount that was dealt. So it makes her a little bit of a tougher opponent. On that one, you can even play without the scenario card. You just add that specific rule to the... Uh, Neo mission, which we'll get to. <laughs> then we have Double Vision, which is another Neo one. This one makes Neo a bit stronger, I believe, and might have... I don't know if it has any extra effects or not. But it does make her quite a bit stronger, and she's doing uh, two cards a turn, too, which is nasty. Anybody who backed the... Um, campaign on Kickstarter got Neapolitan here for free she's now a paid add-on that you can add to the game I I want to say ten dollars I believe it's ten dollars she's our first sub boss character and being a sub boss you get this as one of your objectives you run and you got an aura marker on here to keep track of her health as with other objectives there's special rules on there too and she has a deck very similar to the villain decks, but it's only made up of two stances. They're subtle and aggressive. And um, I haven't even shuffled these yet because we haven't used her. But uh, same pretty much thing applies. The attacks and everything are very similar. Not as much text on a lot of these cards, but you do have ones that have effects on them. At the start of each round, you're going to look at her top card. And uh, one of the sideline players has to choose to engage. In this case, it's her aggressive stance. And just like you would a villain, they have to engage her. If nobody engages her, that damage, whatever that card is, in this case, one damage, would go direct to the active player. If somebody encounters them, does engage them, you fight it out just like you would against the boss, reveal the card, compare it to the player card, and so on. Neat little mechanic, adds a little bit more threat to those than the standard minions. If you concentrate on beating the crap out of the building, sometimes you can even ignore minion cards. The sub-bosses you really can't ignore because they're going to do damage regardless if uh, you try to ignore them. I take it back, I looked it up. The other individual sub-bosses are $10. The Neo Pack is actually $20 because it comes with the... Um, upgrade pack as well. It's called like combat ready upgrade pack or something like that. And it comes with Neo and all this stuff that we're going to get into. And I talked about these in the base game uh, video. The um, Kickstarter came with these extra 
six cards for each of the um, characters. And uh, they're all the gold cards, they're all upgrades, including upgrades for your ultimate abilities, which are kind of cool. And uh, tier three and four. So lots of new stuff for each of the characters there to add to their upgrade decks. And that does come with this pack. And then also as part of this pack, you get, I believe it's a 10 card. We'll see, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, 10 card expansion for each of the villains. And I think they're variable what they are. For like Roman, you get 3 new aggressive cards, 4 new balance cards, 2 new subtle, and a new event. I think there's 1 new event for each of them. But I think like Adam's got more 2, 4, and 3 in 1. And then Cinder had 4... Three and two and one. Cinder was the one that had the more aggressive cards. So that's a look at everything from the uh, Combat Ready expansion. And uh, the only thing you're not going to get if you buy this at retail are these. These were Kickstarter exclusives. So all that stuff comes in that Combat Ready pack for 20 bucks. You get the new sub boss. You get uh, new upgrade cards for each of the heroes. And 10 new cards for each of the villains to add a little bit more variety to their decks. On our next pack here, this was the Emerald and Mercury pack. And this one's 10 bucks to add them as a uh, new sub-boss. Just like Neo. In it, you get a new objective card. Which gives you rules for using Emerald and Mercury as a sub-boss. And uh, they work pretty much the exact same way as... Uh, Neo does, they have their own deck, they have their own aura marker on there, and just like the uh, minions and other guys, at the beginning of each turn, this card's going to come up. If a player doesn't engage them, this card flips over and attacks the uh, active player. If somebody does engage them, you do it just like you would the villain, comparing their um, attacks and so on. Again, they only have aggressive and subtle stances in there, and... Uh, they have an interesting variety of cards, some pretty powerful ones in here in this, because it is Emerald and Mercury working together. Interestingly enough, they're listed as a medium boss, just like uh, Neo is. And then on to our last one here. This one was labeled as the OC pack. I think it was supposed to be other character. They hadn't announced who this was at the time, because the uh, season hadn't started. The season started, they said it was a character that was going to make an appearance this season. Unfortunately, for those of you who were waiting or wanted it to be a secret, they released it in the Rooster Teeth store and said who it was. It was also mentioned in the forums and things by the people who got there early. So, I'm going to spoil it if you don't already know, but uh, it's Little Miss, who showed up in, I think, episode 2 of the new season. And uh, she comes with her own objective card here. That's a new sub-boss. Yeah, she got a big wall of text here. I haven't read it all because I haven't actually played her yet, but it involves something with enhancements and uh, she also heals whenever an event comes into play. But oddly enough, she's listed as difficult where Mercury and Emerald together are only listed as medium. Makes me wonder what this character is going to be capable of in the coming episodes. And then as with the other sub-bosses, she's got a deck of aggressive and subtle cards. And uh, for her, most of these, I think, involve her minions. Her little network of spies and assassins. Interesting to see how she plays out and uh, how she turns out in the show. But that's a look at the other two uh, mini-bosks expansion packs that you can buy and add to your game. They did come in these little cardboard boxes. I'm not sure if that's the way they're actually coming in retail. They did for us Kickstarter backers. But uh, you're going to add them to your main box anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. And I think they're 10 bucks each if you want to uh, add them to your game. Always fun to have more variety and uh, extra options when playing your game. And that's a look at all of the add-on content you can get for Ruby Combat Ready. 
There's a couple more things they've added to the store that I didn't actually pick up. They make a deck box now for the heroes and for the villains. Uh, you still need to do something with the insert in there to make all this stuff fit. So those are a nice option. I'm not sure how well they'll work with sleeved cards, but uh, they're made specifically for the game, so they should put the cards unsleeved at least. There's also a new rollout playmat, which is like the um, nylon, I think it is, over neoprene, whatever it is, over the rubber backing. Rolls out kind of like a giant mouse pad. You see uh, Magic players use them, game mats. They're used in all sorts of games now. Um, they do make a game board version of that. If you're interested in that as a cosmetic upgrade, not really a necessary thing. They also have a miniatures for the villains. Unfortunately, with all the cool sub-boss villains, it only comes with Cinder, Adam, and Roman. And it's a little steep for the price, so I didn't pick one of those up. I'm waiting to see if they go on sale, and I may do it. The other option, actually, somebody mentioned to me was they do sell the little uh, ruby figures that are in blind boxes. If you can find somebody on eBay and actually get those, you can get the actual hero characters and everybody pre-painted in little uh, miniatures. <clears throat> Not sure how they are size compared to the miniatures that come in the game, but that's an option. And they do have all of the villain characters. I don't know if uh, Little Miss is in there yet because she's rather new, but all the other characters are available in those. And... Um, Hopefully they're going to keep expanding upon the game. We'd love to see new villains added. The sub-bosses are a cool thing, and they got a ton of different characters they could use for those. Even some of the larger Grimm could make out as a sub-boss. Again, everything here except these three missions are available to pick up as extra. Those three were Kickstarter only, and I'm sure you could track them down if you really wanted them, if you missed backing. So you're not missing out on a lot of exclusives, which is one of my huge pet peeves with uh, Kickstarter. If you don't buy in right at the beginning, you end up losing out, and in this case, you don't. So it's well worth picking up if you waited on the game. It's still a lot of fun to be had here, a lot of variety. These add-on cards for the character decks aren't all that spectacular because they're all Tier 3 and 4 cards, so you're not even going to get to them until later on. But the sub-bosses are definitely a cool new addition. And the extra cards for each of the bosses adds a little bit more variety to each of their decks. One new event to each of their decks. So it changes things up from game to game because you're not going to get all the cards. I don't think I've ever actually gone through an entire villain's deck of cards. So the more cards that are in there, the more variety of what's actually going to come up over the course of the game. And one thing of concern here is that uh, once the cards are sleeved, even my little... Uh, change that I made to the box here is going to make this a really tight fit when we try to fit all of these cards in. For right now, this is just the base game in the box. We still have uh, the three sub-boss decks to add in there. 30 cards, 10 to each of the main villain decks here, and then 6 cards for each of the hero decks here. So I'm going to try to squeeze those in right now and see how well it works, but I'm thinking you're going to have to go with something else for dividers in the very least. Um, I did mention in the video for the base game that there's a, somebody sent me a really cool file to make dividers with the images on them for the, uh, the box. I didn't get to print those up, but uh, I'm still working on getting around to it. But uh, they may have to go with something like that on an index card or a piece of... I don't know what you call that stuff, the thicker cardboard there, and um, see if that'll fit and uh, not take up near as much space. These uh, foam cores, what, a quarter inch, so it does take up a little bit of space. Makes it nice and easy to find what you're looking for, though. I kind of shame to get rid of them. The other concern is that unsleeved, all of the um, objective cards from the game fit in this little slot perfectly, and then the uh, uh, scrolls put on top of them. Once you sleeve them, the extra handful that come in the add-on stuff now makes it stick well above the slot here. So I may have to go in and trim this down a little to make those fit in there properly so that the scrolls will sit flush on top because as it is, the scrolls are going to sit way up now. Not as bad as I thought. About an extra scroll and a half, maybe too tall. You can see the first one, top one's completely loose there. So, but uh, not sure how well that's gonna work out over time. We'll have to see. 
I did not try putting, um, which I should do while I got the video running here, putting sleeved cards in these slots. And yeah, even with the tight fitting cards I have, they're not gonna fit in there. So that removes that as an option too. Figured I'd try, couldn't hurt. So work something out eventually. I may have to get rid of the insert and go with something else, which was originally my plan anyway, because I don't like the, the way the miniatures sit in here. It ends up bending some of the miniatures. There's no room for the tokens. So there's a lot of room in here for improvement for storage. I'm going to take a second and throw these in and see if I can get them all to fit. And just as I was spearing with the sleeves on the cards and the um, dividers that I have, I managed to get everything in there except the sub-boss decks. So, Emerald Mercury, Little Miss, and Neo still have nowhere to go. So we're definitely going to have to scrap the insert and uh, come up with a better storage solution for things. If you do have them all in here, the way I have it in here with that section cut out and using foam core as inserts, everything will fit in there unsleeved. So this is only a problem if you sleeve your cards, so keep that in mind. And the uh, same thing goes with the um, objective cards up here. They all fit in there actually perfectly if they're unsleeved. So once you start sleeving things is when you start running into problems. And uh, you just need to keep that in mind if you're going to do it. With all the tokens and everything in the miniatures anyway, I was probably going to redo the box anyway. Just wasn't planning on doing it quite yet. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for our look at the uh, extra things that you can buy to add on to your Ruby Combat Ready game. I hope it helps you decide if there's anything in there you'd be interested in adding to your game. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.